There have been many changes that have gradually eroded the institutional form that began under the British. In the late 1800s, the British planters introduced and cultivated tea and rubber as commercial crops. They used just one indigenous resource, vast areas of land ideal for growing tropical tree crops. The local Sinhalese felt disgruntled, refusing to be labourers on land that they saw as stolen from them by the British Crown. To fill this gap, waves of indentured labour from neighbouring South India were brought over to work on the estates. The British planters saw the labour as needing care and the workers began to see the responsibility for their welfare as falling with the planters. During these colonial times, welfare provision for the estate workers was generally better than for the rest of the country. Health indicators, for instance, at the time of independence, were much better than the rural sector elsewhere. In 1948, once both India and Sri Lanka were independent of the British Crown, over 700,000 estate workers became stateless persons, without citizenship in either India or Sri Lanka. A year later, new laws took away their right to vote. The changing political and economic climate and the expectation that the estates would be nationalised led many private plantation companies to make severe cuts to welfare spending. Following nationalisation of the estates in 1975, the state took over the responsibility for workers' welfare. Significant improvements in both education and health conditions took place. In 1976, over 300 estate schools came under the purview of the Ministry of Education, with most of the teachers coming from the estate population itself. Health was a particular focus, with the gap between the estates and the rest of the country slowly closing during this period of state management. During the 1990s, reprivatization of the management of the estate sector took place. This resulted in many changes to the industry. Despite reprivatization, the state kept responsibility for education and health. In 1994, the Ministry of Health was requested to take over 54 estate hospitals. And in 1997, a separate ministry for estate infrastructure development was created to promote social equity for the estate community. With the grant of citizenship and the franchise in the late 80s to Tamils of Indian descent, the estate community now holds considerable political sway. The trade unions and political parties are important actors on the estates. The two political parties, traditionally representing plantation Tamils' interests, are the Ceylon Workers' Congress, formed in the 1950s, and the more recent Upcountry People's Front. However, Workers' perceptions on how well these actors represent their interests are mixed. More recently, different changes to the lives of estate workers have taken place, brought about largely through changing attitudes of estate workers towards estate work. Workers and their families began to diversify into other employment areas. They began to move to urban areas and seek very different employment opportunities, Others even left the country for better job prospects and to send money back home to their families. As a result, the workforce no longer comprises only Indian Tamils working and living on the estates. It now also includes a non-resident wage labour that live in the nearby Singhala villages. Despite these important yet gradual changes, many key features remain constant. <laughs> 